In my mind, I'm gone to Carolina. Can't you just see the sunshine? Can't you just feel the moonshine? Ain't it just like a friend of mine? Hit me from behind. Yes, I've gone to Carolina in my mind. Karen, she's a silver sun. You best walk away and watch it shine. Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video for you. Today we're going to look at the haul of stuff that I got from Claudia at Bower Inks in Toronto. Bower Inks is the Canadian distributor of Robert Oster and Blackstone Inks of Australia and KWZ, pronounced Queasy, Standard and Iron Gall Inks of Poland. I ordered a Queasy ink, the Azure Number no. 5 Blue, and a Robert Oster ink, the Fire and Ice. And I was totally surprised when my order arrived that Claudia had added a whole bunch of swag. So let's look at the Christmas in March unboxing right now. <music> And here we are with the package from Bauer Inks in Toronto. I've ordered a couple of different colors from Claudia. And we're going to open the package and see what else is in here. Let's see. This was in the bottom of the package. Some nice test cards from Robert Oster Inks. I have to fill those up with some color. And a coloring book. I always wanted a coloring book. Because now I've got so many inks, I'm going to have to start keeping track of them. And let's see. And here is the point of the package in the first place. Queasy ink. Handmade fountain pen ink. And this is Queasy Ink Azure number five. I selected this color because it's such a, a beautiful blue. I've been writing with this pen and I've held off reviewing this pen, waiting for this ink to go with it. And of course, this is the Moonman M800. This one has a Moonman nib. And it's currently inked up with some diamine. But it's not quite blue enough for me. And I'm thinking this Azure is going to be perfect for this pen. Open this up. That's looking like a beautiful ink. And then we have some Robert Oster. This is the other ink I was looking forward to. This is the Astrakiza Rot and the Fire and Ice. Oh, and there's another one. This is a surprise. Astrakiza Olive. I think I know what pen that's going to go in as well. And Some Tomoe River notebooks. Lovely. So there's a nice haul for you. And we will feature it in an upcoming video. It has been a couple of weeks since I did that unboxing of the Bower Inks haul from Claudia. And I've had a chance to use some of the ink and some of the swag. So let's start with the key items, the inks. As I said in the intro, I ordered one Queasy and one Robert Oster ink and ended up with a total of four. Claudia said she'd send me a couple of samples, but just in case Claudia is watching and is not familiar with a sample bottle, this is a sample bottle. This is not. Teeny weeny little space. Phenomenal cosmic power. 
I'm going to use one of the two Tomoe River notebooks Claudia sent along to do some writing and swab samples. I've already used some of the Robert Oster test cards that she provided, there they are, and the color ring sample book, which uh, has greetings from San Francisco Pen Show of 2019, which I think is really cool. First up, I'm going to look at the ink that I've used quite extensively over the last couple of weeks. That's the Queasy Azure number no. 5. As I mentioned in the unboxing, I was holding off doing the review of my Moonman M800 Galaxy until I had this ink in my hands to use. You can see the review of this pen right here. The pen is simply amazing, and the ink has quickly surpassed Compeki as my favorite Azure Blue ink. I'll use the Moonman M800 to do the sample on the Tommy paper. So I'm trying to emulate Claudia Astrakiza's method of doing ink samples, and there are two things I lack that she has. A palette knife, as she hates Q-tip swabs, and talent, as you can see here from one of her samples. So as always, Daredevil Doug will compromise and make do with the tools at hand, and use them live on camera for your universal amusement and entertainment. And sorry, I made a mistake. My handy spark plug gapping tool will do as a palette knife, and I'll just use the pen that has the particular ink in it, as my life is short and I don't want to spend my remaining days cleaning out pens. Homer, I'm starting to realize life is short. It is? Also, I'm shamelessly borrowing from other YouTube pen reviewers. As one commentator previously said, you're just a ripoff of fig boot on pens with jokes. And... Oh, thank you very much. I'm going to use Kathy's technique from Gadget Stop 321, where she prints out the first letters of the alphabet and then numbers. Again, without the talent, of course. My mileage does indeed vary. Your mileage may vary. So this is the Moonman M800 Galaxy with a fine Pen BBS steel Waverly nib. Moonman. M800 Galaxy with a fine Waverly nib. And this, I guess I should title this first. This is KWZ or Queasy Ink. Azure number five. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a smear test there. This is going to take a bit to dry. And then I'm going to eschew the, the cotton swab because uh, we generally don't write with cotton swabs. Not many of us do anyway. And if we do, it's illegible. So I'm going to take my trusty Moonman eyedropper, which I'm finding finding a use for, and I'm going to take just a drop of ink here, and I'm going to drop it onto the Tommy River. And then I'm going to use my palette knife to do a nice smear. Now I probably botched that, but uh, hopefully Claudia will approve. One more note on this queasy ink, and this note includes a story. Oh no, not again. I spent the first week writing in my journal every night with this pen and the Queasy Azure. As I wrote, which is usually around 2 a.m. for my journaling, I kept smelling a sweet smell I thought was chocolate. I kept searching around my desk and chair for any chocolate chips I may have dropped, as I'm a huge chocolate chip cookie monster. A chocolate chip cookies at all. And my wife makes them from scratch, and I get them when the chips are still hot and messy. Hence my search for stray chocolate. For all you Americans, these are called toll house cookies in your country. Typical Yanks, everything has a toll. Cross a bridge, pay a toll, eat a cookie, pay a toll. But I digress. So, 
I'm on my hands and knees, okay, this is true, <laughs> searching for stray chocolate without any success. After about a week of this, I finally used one of my remaining brain cells and smelled the nib of the pen. Oh my God, the nib smells like chocolate. I got on Facebook and messaged Claudia, this freaking ink smells like chocolate. Chocolate. And this is what she sent me. So it's vanilla. Of course it is. And I love vanilla. Apparently the original ink had a strong chemical smell and people complained. So Conrad puts a vanilla smell into certain inks to cover that chemical smell. So now the danger is that people will eat their inks. Zombie apocalypse tip number 42. Do not eat your queasy inks. Good Lord. And on to the next ink. This is Robert Oster. Fire and Ice. And here is the card for it. I'd seen online reviews and samples of this ink, and it intrigued me as much as the J. Urban Emerald of Chivore ink intrigued me as well. So I ordered this ink. I put it in my M2 Moonman with a 0.7 millimeter stub nib. So here we have Robert Oster. Fire and ice. And this is a Moon Man. M2 with a 0 0.7 millimeter stub. And a little dabble, do ya? Brill green, a little dabble, do ya? Brill green, you look so never there. Brill green, the gals will offer to ya. They'll up to get their fingers in your hair. And next we have the two samples Claudia gave me. Full 20 milliliter bottles of Robert Oster Asterkiza Rot, which means red in German, and Robert Oster Asterkiza Olive. We'll leave the rot for last since it's already rotten and look at the olive. It's rotten, I tell you, rotten! I'm not a big green fan. The greens I do like bend towards the blue-green. Emeralds, the Fire Ice, the Konpeki, Lamy Turquoise, those kinds of colors. They are a nicer green for me. When they bend towards the yellow range, I'm not really interested. This green is in that yellow-green range, but because of the value, I'm getting color technical here and might break into my university color theory lecture if I'm not careful. But because the value is lower, I assume with the mix of brown or brown and gray, the color is muted and goes into what we might call olive drab, which is a U.S. Army fatigue color, not because the color is fatiguing, but because being a soldier is fatiguing. Well, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I was happy to get this color as it matches my Pen BBS 355 Aurora better than I think either the Lamy Turquoise or this Orochizuku Chicken Run, um, Chiclet Rim, uh, Chiku Rin. Why, you thieving little boogers? This is the Pen BBS 355 that was gifted to me by a viewer last year. Thank you very much, Sam. That's not his real name. And a wonderful pen. But I, again, I had difficulty matching the ink. So we'll take a look at this one. This is Robert Oster. Asterkiza Olive. And this is the Pen BBS 355 with a fine Waverly 
nib. Plop. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. And last but not least is the Robert Oster Asterkiza Rot for Red. You may have noticed I have a lot of amber pens. I love the amber resin finishes and have a Moonman M800 in amber and a Bach nib on the way. Plus I'm planning a video soon that will focus on amber, its allure, and its uses in history. However, getting an ink I like that matches amber has been a challenge. Mostly I just ignore matching with my favorite amber pens. My pen BBS 308, 480, and 323 Amber as a Cat pens all have Con Pecky in them, which was my everyday ink, until the Azure number 5, that is. The inks that I've tried to match with the amber, uh, the Mont Blanc Toffee Brown, the G. Urbain Caroube de Chypre, I've practiced that a lot. And diamine ancient copper. All have not really cut it. The ancient copper comes the closest so far. But let's look at the rotten red. This is my Amber is a Cat Pen BBS 500 with a fine Waverly steel nib. And this is Robert Oster. Astrokisa Rot. And this is Pen BBS five hundred Amber with a fine. Waverly, can't spell Waverly, nib. And I spared you the, the agony of watching me do the alphabet for the previous ones. Well, once this dries, I'll take you back through all the colors as they've dried, and we'll take a closer look at them. Okay, I'm going to take you through each one of these now that they've dried. Hopefully you can see that beautiful purplish dusty rose kind of a sheen that the queasy Azure number no. 5 is giving off. I was absolutely floored by this ink uh, and directly on it's uh, a dark uh, Azure blue with terrific shading, you can see some of the the teal blue, or the you can see some of the azure blue that's in there, and a little bit of purple. I've never seen an ink that actually goes this range of colors before. It's uh, quite lovely, and uh, of course you're getting a lot of sheen on this Tomoe River paper, but it uh, it gives me this effect on most papers that are fountain pen ink friendly. And here is the Robert Oster Fire and Ice. Um, it depends on the paper so much uh, on whether you're going to get this kind of a sheen out of it. But there's the the fire that you get in that that ink right there. Let's get a closer look at that. But that's laying down a lot of ink and taking a long time to dry. 
So you have to have the right paper and the right wetness of pen for it to actually work. And uh, this pen is working nicely. You can see in that title, the Robert Oster has a lot of red in that blue. And here is the Astrakiza Olive. And you can see how it dries a fairly dull grayish kind of, of green. And uh, with plenty of shading from the light lime colors to the deep, deep greens. And what I like is it doesn't bounce off the page and say, I'm green. Because it's not easy being green. It's not easy being green. And then we have the Astrakiza Rot. And I'm going to close up on this so you can see. A lot of different shading here from almost a black to these pinkish kinds of reds here. And I really like this as a as a good match for my ambers. Goes from that black to that reddish brown. I think it works really nicely. I think what I like about this ink is what how it dries. It doesn't turn to a ship brindle brown, as my mom used to call it. It maintains its redness and doesn't cry out, um, I'm red, like maybe my noodler's Widowmaker. And there's no mistaking that, I'm red. Just a short mention of this Tomoe River paper here. This is nothing short of incredible. I've heard it talked about quite often, but I've never had a source before now and never actually felt it or written on it until now. Uh, actually, Bauer Inks officially promotes the idea that Tommy paper like this should be gathered together and rolled upon sans clothing. It is so luxurious. I'm not sure I'll take them up on that, but uh, it's an interesting thought nonetheless. Fascinating. I'm actively searching out A5 journals with this paper in it. It is thin, feels like silk, and yet it doesn't bleed through. Unless, of course, you soak it with with ink like that. But even at that, you know, it's not bad. Not bad at all for the amount of ink I'm piled on there. Outstanding product. So that's my overview of the wonderful package sent to me from Toronto the Good, land of the Stanley Cup champions of 1967, and forever hopeful. Sorry, I meant boastful. There's tears in their eyes. Everything they dreamed about is now coming to fruition. Thanks go out to Claudia Astrakiza for her generosity in these wonderful samples and her generous sharing of expertise and information. So if you like this video, and how could you not like it? It's beyond my comprehension because it has a vanilla smell. Hello, vanilla. How could you not like vanilla? But if you liked it, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell and get a prize, an instant notification of more videos like this. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you for smelling. And that's all she wrote. <laughs>